Hello, everyone. Today's session is on providing effective feedback. Now, we know that uh, feedback is very, very important. We may be doing a lot of right things. We may be doing wrong things. So feedback is important because unless there is feedback, we are not going to get a response. Unless we are going not going to get a response, we are not going to do things better, right? So we want your feedback is normally a statement given by your colleagues, your students, and sometimes also the management. In the corporate sector, this is very normal, but in the school structure, it happens probably once in a year, right? We fill those ACR forms, uh, which is a very confidential report, and it's called the ACR annual confidential report, where we are giving feedback of how we dealt with the students, parents, and how, uh, what is our self-assessment, what is the assessment of the ma management for you, what is the assessment of the head of the department, and so on. So these are various parameters by which we can improve. So going on to the session, the first thing that I would like to say is that effectiveness of feedback is very important. Whenever we are uh, giving a Google form or something like that, nowadays we have, you know, you give a car for servicing, you will find that there is a Google form saying that how was the car service, were you satisfied? rate on one to five and so on sometimes even the resource person sends a google form because they want to know whether the delivery was good the content was good the language spoken was good whether all the questions were answered and so on so providing effective feedback is very crucial especially for students uh, this is one thing which probably many teachers don't do that is giving feedback uh, because unless we give a feedback the students are not going to improve and normally after every periodic test, there is a report card where remarks is given. That is one form of giving feedback, but it happens only two or three times in a year. So that is why it is important that we give this feedback more often through that school diary, through SMS. It can be through various factors, right? So it's important that uh, this is made use of and the student is exactly knowing uh, what to do in the next uh, a few months or the coming year so the second thing is be specific and clear because sometimes when there is no clarity then what happens is that they are not able to do the work properly so it is important that we be specific and clear identify the aspects of our students work that require feedback you know so general comments should be avoided so mostly principal said don't give general comments okay that capable of doing better for example okay so everybody is capable of doing better but that's a very general statement so if you notice something very particular and you want to give a feedback of that i have noticed that this amit for example is a brilliant student and uh, is able to score in science but he does not score in maths because he is not giving sufficient time in practice so that is a specific thing that you have noticed that he is brilliant he understands the concepts but due to lack of practice he is making mistakes so if you just write there is scope for improvement or can do better they will not be able to understand or somebody is making careless mistakes or calculation mistakes somebody is not able to remember formulas so these are very important feedbacks that can be or you can say that you know the focus the concentration level of the student is not good otherwise for short span of duration he is do he is doing good or verbal abilities are good, but writing abilities are poor. You know, so that is important to give concrete examples. You can always give concrete examples of how you dealt with the student in various situations. So unless the parent is told about this, the parent also will not know exactly what is going wrong. The student is not able to finish a paper. So you can say the student is good, but needs to improve on the speed. So the concrete example here will be out of 30 questions, the student has done only 25. So in the question paper also, it should be mentioned that question number 26 to question number 30 was not done. So this becomes an important feedback. It is specific and clear so that suitable action can be taken on it. Focus on the task or the behavior. That is important. The task or the behavior is very important. So we need to direct our feedback towards the student's efforts, strategies, or action rather than personal qualities or character. So we have a tendency to judge people by the character. 
So that is a separate part of analysis that we, you know, in many schools now, the holistic report cards are being prepared. So there are various parameters by which we, you know, uh, give grades or, uh, you know, there are parameters that can improve or is okay. And, you know, that those kind of parameters are there in uh, when we introduce that kind. But when we are doing a feedback in terms of academics, then it should be purely academics. So that means personal criticism should not be there. So I have a dislike for the student because the student is not respecting me, for example. Then that should not come in way of giving a feedback in terms of the improvement that we require in his academics. So whenever we are writing comments, make sure that we are not personal against anyone. It's not, not, it should not be personal comments uh, as far as you are concerned or we should not personally criticize anyone. So it should be uh, a purely student-teacher relationship and all students are equal for a teacher and that's why you are known for your sense of justice, isn't it? Every teacher should be known for their sense of justice. So it is important that the student's efforts is recognized, the action is recognized. Okay, the student was uh, working very hard during the zero periods for the past two months. So that's an important observation, right? Student needs to make use of the time in the zero period. That's another observation. Okay, we have zero periods in many schools where the student is free to do certain things when other students are involved in activities. What do these other students do? Are they making use of their time or they're gossiping away or they're wasting time or they're going to play? So this is something, uh, the feedback that can give it. Okay, so why don't you make use of your zero period or your free periods in learning up this, this, this or practicing this, this, this. So this feedback is very important, okay. And unless we point it out, sometimes the student knows it, but the student doesn't do it. Or sometimes the student is not aware that, uh, you know, uh, uh, of his, there is no self-realization. When there is no self-realization, somebody has to say, that's why they are kids. And even for adults, sometimes we need reminders. So it is important that the kids are reminded again and again of their duties and obligations uh, of what has to be done and therefore there is some expectations from them, right? Then we go to the uh, timely feedback. So it is important that when we are giving a feedback, it has to be a timely feedback, not that you are giving a feedback of something which happened months ago. So the chance of rectification becomes very late. So it's important that when you notice something, the feedback is immediate. So feedback can be positive and feedback can be negative. So Ideally, as soon as the student is submitting something, you say, okay, brilliant, this piece of work, I read through the whole project. And what I liked about this was that you made an effort to uh, find so much data and compare it graphically. So that is something positive. And on the other side, you can say that, okay, I went through the project, you could have added a little more on temperature, rainfall and humidity so that there can be better comparisons. So it's important that when you give feedback, it can be constructive as well so that they improve on their work when they submit next time. And also positive feedback, what they have done uh, good, that can be also given, right? So then only the impact is going to be maximized. Use a constructive tone. The tone of speaking is very, very important. Some It should not be the preaching method, you see. So everybody hates this preaching method. When somebody starts preaching something, then... Uh, people get bored and the students you know they start hitting their heads or banging their heads or they feel sleepy oh my god again ma'am and sir i started the same old story isn't it i am sure you must have experienced this today's generation are not interested in uh, you know listening to big lectures so we need to use a very constructive tone like friends you know how they talk positive constructive is very important and therefore it is important that when we use a language which encourages them to do better the encourages them and you have to uh, maybe use different techniques with different students so you made a great progress here are some, some suggestions to work to further enhance your work so so that is a positive statement that you see on the screen so any language which is positive can be used uh if you say oh you are good for nothing and you know uh, you you will not be able to pass and all that these are totally negative comments and uh, they will go against you and the child will get probably demoralized and will not do anything further at all. So the tone has to be constructive. The statements have to be positive and the student should feel that you are a genuine person actually giving good advice and then only they will start doing it and you will get the results. Be specific. 
so specific strategies are very important so if you say your writing skills need improvement now how how the student doesn't know the parent doesn't know so it's important that you specify what are the areas so is writing skills where uh, is the child making too many spelling mistakes okay is the child uh, making grammatical errors so all these are things which you need to discuss with the child and the parent. It's important that the student knows exactly whether it is a grammatical mistake or is it in framing of sentences uh, or is it, uh, you know, the word limits are not kept or not writing as per the requirement of uh, the CBSC. So there are many things. So you need to point, point out the exact. So if you say that your writing skills need improvement, it doesn't make sense. The child is, will repeat the same thing and get confused further and maybe make the same mistakes. So it's important that our feedback is clear and concise. Encourage self-reflection. It is important. Many adults and students are actually not giving themselves time on self-reflection. Self-reflection is very, very important. Unless we close our eyes and meditate for some time and we find out what are the problems, we are not going to find solutions. Solutions can only be found when we introspect, when we give some time to ourselves. So the teacher can help in the facility, uh, the facility, you know, they can help in this. They can fa facilitate this whole uh, structure by asking open-ended questions. The facilitation is very, very important because unless you facilitate a discussion based on that, the student will never think on that. So ask open-ended questions. Open-ended question means where the question cannot finish in yes or no. The question should not be in yes or no. Okay, just nodding the head will not serve the purpose. Or yes or no, nodding will not serve the purpose. So it is important that you know, uh, we bring in a variety of open-ended questions where there is a, a scope for dialogue. Unless the scope for dialogue is there, the student will not think critically about their strength. How are they going to improve? We have to help. As educators, we need to ask questions. We need to devise strategies and we need to enhance their learning. So it is important that the student is given this opportunity because if the student is not given the opportunity, they'll never do it. Now, you need to balance your positive and constructive feedback. Let's say we are not calling in negative feedback, but constructive feedback. Okay, nowadays that word negative, even the board is not using fail or they discourage us to use fail. They say not promoted. Okay, promoted and not promoted. So it means the same thing. But at the same time, what is happening is that we are not using a derogatory or a negative term in that. So constructive feedback means what are the what are the things that they can improve upon so it's important to highlight the areas of improvement unless we give them the areas of improvement they will not do it that is a fact okay children want to enjoy life adults want to enjoy life unless there is a fixed pattern or some aim or goal or target in their life they will not do it that's a fact that is why all the greatest of thinkers have always said, make plans, make vision boards, write down what you want to achieve, isn't it? That's what they all say. So it is important that we acknowledge their strength and at the same time also give them constructive feedback so that they can do better. Use a variety of feedback. Now, a single way of giving feedback is not going to work probably. We can give written comments, we can give oral comments, you know, we need to uh, devise different, different methods by which we can give these feedback. So it could be through SMS, it could be through WhatsApp, it could be through video lessons, it can be through various uh, methods which you feel will connect to your parents and students. So different formats for diverse learners, some people, you know, you can take them to the field and probably give them give them a feedback they will understand more some people you know they will you can take them to an art room or you know uh, do that or you have an assembly special assembly and then through that assembly you can give some message to the students uh, regarding what you want to say to them so this uh, when the student understand the true meaning of what you are trying to say then they will do it 
because ultimately the student has to do we can only advise as parents as teachers we can only advise or in or we can make known to them that this is what is happening in your life and unless you do this then you are not going to achieve your goal and remember the goal is set by them not by us in the olden times uh, you know the, our parents or our teachers used to determine our goals that you need to be an engineer you need to without even finding out what the aptitude of the child is but today's times have changed today parents are more understanding uh, they have more access to uh, institutions more financial power has come into uh, many of the families now and there are uh, lots of opportunities which did not exist probably 10 or 20 years back so when i am giving a variety of feedback uh, then it is important that our diverse learners are taken care of so it should not be a single form of feedback everybody is given a form where you know so and so such and such uh, feedback is given by the teacher it doesn't work it doesn't work you are experienced teachers you must have experience that whenever we try to give a feedback okay and then what happens next time the same thing is happening and the child passes from 1 2 3 up to 12 and nothing happens there may be exceptions to this rule of maybe you know 10% students changing from junior school to senior school but ideally that doesn't change the reason is because the feedback is same over the period of time and very rarely you will find students who are self motivated or because of one or two teachers who inspired them or because of a parent or some elder in the family who inspired them that they have they changed tracks and they use the feedback to become better so we need to become those agents catalysts of change when we need to actually bridge the gap uh, between the student and the uh, what they can achieve so we need to be catalysts Uh, speed up the reaction basically in achievement of their goal the final outcome has to be uh, reached and who is going to be the catalyst we we means actually the parents and the teachers uh, because we are the most uh, you know uh, i would say loving caring uh, people who wants only good for our students i don't think there is any parent or teacher who wants bad for the students we wish them well always and we want every student of ours to not only pass but come out with flying colors in all the exams so it is important that uh, we devise methods which are effective encourage student ownership i think this is the most important thing and for me personally it is uh, something which i follow uh, deeply uh every time whenever i get a batch of students that is take ownership i always say that if you are able to maintain silence with in the absence of the teacher that means you have been trained well not in the presence of the teacher when the teacher is turning back if you are misbehaving that means you are not respecting the teacher if you are saying yes yes sir yes sir or yes ma'am in front of your teacher but behind your teacher you are not listening to the instruction that means you are not respecting the teacher so the student ownership is important make them understand that if you are respecting a person then the person's words need to be respected if you are respecting someone in the family your father or mother then whatever they say you listen right not that you say yes and behind their backs you are doing something else same thing in the class so the same thing happens in the learning process you know many times during the report card parents will come with their kids and say uh, you know promise her that you will study and promise her that you will study and then ultimately they will say okay i promise in front of the parent and when the parents go next day they are back to their you know their own ways so it is important that uh, uh, all this is uh, you know explain to the students properly uh, especially the senior kids Uh, who are capable of understanding when you talk to them the small kids probably need other ways like circle time and so on where you know you you talk to them through games but when we are talking about senior students we need to encourage them to ask questions mm, our basic problem is that 90% of the teachers are not encouraging the students to ask questions they will say shut up sit down or you are wasting my time this is a common complaint that students have told that our teachers don't encourage questioning and the poor child out of curiosity may ask questions there may be some miscreants also asking questions which are not relevant but then we need to tackle those questions also properly okay they we need probably we can say okay that question is not relevant to what i am teaching you come after the class i'll be able to answer that or you send this question via whatsapp let me try so this is what you can do no never you know uh, uh, snub them and say that i am not going to answer your question but we need to encourage this questioning and unless we encourage them to ask questions 
we will not be able to improve their learning process because their doubts will only be in their mind. It will not come out. So we need to actively engage them in this feedback uh, loop. A dialogue is important. We are not going to lecture one way. Like, this is what you have to do. This is the feedback. It's not like that. Allow them to ask questions, see clarification. Allow them to express their concerns. Okay, why? what is stopping them from studying? Have, they, have you ever asked them? Okay, sir, after I go back from school, these are the problems that I am having. Or this is the issue in my family. Or this is the problem with me. I am trying to concentrate, but when my mind is on gaming, because during the summer vacation or during COVID times, I was playing 24 hour on games. And now I cannot get back to study. So he needs help. He is not able to find help because probably nobody asked him and nobody, everybody thinks he is lazy. But that child may be having a genuine problem. So it's important that when we are free to talk to our students, they also come up with things which probably we are not aware. And this dialogue deepens their understanding and promotes a collaborating learning environment. And then the, comes the follow-up and monitoring. So many, many times we do a lot of good things. But there is no follow-up. And follow-up is very important because unless we follow up, we will not know whether the student has actually done what we have said or not. Continuous monitoring is important. That is why, uh, you know, we maintain our chronicles. And there we say, okay, these are the students we are following up. This is the progress that they have made. Or this is what we talk to the parents. All those things are recorded and noted down. So follow-up and monitoring is very, very important and additional support or clarification as required should be that we need to celebrate their growth and also acknowledge their efforts along the way. So uh, uh, this is again an important aspect. Many times we do so many good things, but we don't record it in our chronicles, nor do we do a follow-up and monitoring. And we think that we have done you know, our duty by explaining what has to be done. But without the follow-up, actually, we find that 80% of the students are not doing the work which was assigned. And therefore, it becomes a futile exercise because you had spent so much of time and energy of yours in doing the follow-up process. So, But it was not recorded and then it was not monitored to the next level. Uh, so you had completed level one, but then to the next level, uh, it was not there because probably you realize that this is one year I'm teaching the student, let the next teacher handle him. So that becomes, and from next to next, next, the child reaches up to class 10 and then there is no escape. And ultimately the child has to give a board exam and the child is not able to clear the exam because the child has been promoted from one class to the other, uh, you know, uh, uh, without any proper follow-up and monitoring being done. So it's important that at every stage, if the educator is taking care of the child in terms of the follow-up and monitoring, then that process of, you know, holding back the child in uh, class 10 will not happen. The child probably will have a chance, at least uh, uh, the educator's responsibility is not there uh, in this case, if the student is not uh, clearing. Because at every stage, the child was given support, the child was, uh, you know, informed about the procedures, and the child was given all sort of help about the academics, and then uh, we are at least, uh, uh, you know, uh, in our hearts, we are clear that we have done our best. So that is very important for an educator that uh, they get this, that we have done uh, our best. So <clears throat> remember that effective feedback should be tailored to individual needs that we have already covered this. And our feedback strategies should be, you know, uh, in multiple ways, not in single ways. And the student should be very comfortable in receiving feedback. It should not be a stressful environment. When we are getting feedback from our principal, it should not be a, a, an, a pro, uh, an area of stress. It should be something which we are looking for. Okay, these are the things I need to improve upon. Yes. Now, also one thing is that, okay, these are the things which you need to improve on. And secondly is giving opportunities for that teacher or that student to improve upon. Okay, if somebody is saying your communication skills need to be improved. So what am I doing? Am I suggesting some courses or am I going to, you know, enroll that person for some uh, courses or suggesting some sessions? This is important because 
uh, then it becomes meaningless. If you pass the buck and say that, okay, your communication skills need important, your writing skills need important. How? We need to be definite, especially when teachers um, are dealing with students, it is important that we exactly tell them what has to be done. Then only it becomes a positive feedback. So I hope uh, this session was worthwhile and you are going to give effective feedback to your students, not only positive, but also constructive feedback so that they all come out with flying colors. That is what we all want. And uh, I think uh, it should be incorporated by every teacher, whether you are teaching for KG to class 12 uh, teachers, everyone should be monitoring their students over a period of time and try to give them uh, feedbacks which will um, make them the best version of themselves. Thank you.